is hard to explain how this place works when most do not know how the laws of electricity control the world around us. I will try in this video to explain how incoherent electrostatic acceleration works while using examples that can be recreated by anyone. To start out, we will take a look at Earth's electrostatic field. This is important because we, along with all the matter in this known realm, are inside of an electrostatic field. The Earth itself has a measurable negative charge compared to the air above it all across the plane. As soon as you leave the surface, there is a positive charge in the air around you that grows in electrostatic potential the further you go up towards the sky. It is a steady, gradual rise in potential, which tells us, according to the laws of electricity, that we are between two Gaussian surfaces. Yeah, exactly. It tells us that we're pretty much in between something that is artificially created or divinely created, however you want to look at it. Regardless, it is technology, and it is very simple technology. It is an electrostatic field generated by two Gaussian surfaces, and and everything else has fallen into place. They've given us everything we need to then uh, work out what gravity is, to work out how spiders fly, to work out all kinds of things. Isn't it amazing? Let's continue. A Gaussian surface is simply a surface that encloses or distributes a charge. If there were only one surface, the rate at which the positive potential grew would be different. Knowing that we are between two Gaussian surfaces, we can also know that certain phenomenon will take place in all matter within the electric field or area between the two surfaces. For this topic, we will first look at polarization through electrostatic induction. Electrostatic induction is a phenomenon where the positive and negative static charges on matter are slightly separated or polarized due to the electrostatic charge of its surrounding area. If one set of the object's surroundings is positive and the other negative, the negative charge on the object will be attracted to the positive area around it, while the positive charge on the object will be attracted to the negative area on the opposite side. So here on Earth, the positive charge on our bodies is always attracted down towards the Earth, and the negative will be attracted to the air above. This phenomena creates a slight force in that downward vector because as soon as we leave the ground, we start becoming positively charged by the air around us and are now forced towards the negative of the ground. This is electrostatic acceleration. One might think that the attraction from above and below would cancel out completely but it is the electrostatic gradient that creates a flow from the positive above to the negative below. In this demonstration, I have a metal button hanging from helium balloons that keep the button buoyant just above the ground. By only adding more electrostatic potential to the button, you can see it will appear heavier and force the buoyant object down along the vector lines created by the electrostatic potential difference. Without changing the density of the medium or the object, one can change the overall weight or gravitas of the object. To do an actual experiment on the topic of gravitation, this variable of electrostatic acceleration must be taken into account at all times. Now we will get to the incoherent part of the phrase. It is called incoherent because it is not completely polarized, like a magnet, but only slightly on its surface through electrostatic induction. A magnet, with all of its potential stored on opposite sides, would be considered coherent. 
Now these forces are very weak and only apply a slight pressure along the vector they create. All other pressure mediations, such as buoyancy, atmospheric pressure, and temperature are certainly stronger. But nonetheless, these weak electrostatic forces are ever present in the world around us. And I fear the day they may come to an end. Again, I fully understand people's reluctancy to use the word gravity when speaking of this place we live. So instead, let's call it what it really is. Incoherent electrostatic acceleration. Let's teach those just finding out the nature of this world in which we live the correct way. The fact that we live in an electric realm with a static electric field you yourself can go out and measure tells us without a doubt that these well understood laws of electricity create the downward bias phenomena we witness all across the plane. Instead of using the word gravitation, I ask you to educate yourself further on incoherent electrostatic acceleration. This is Good Times for All here, signing out. As always, thanks for watching.